Hmm. Okay. <coughs> Welcome to the Sack to the Future 1961 bonus. If you saw my son's broadcast earlier, we figured out how to use his account to broadcast games. So we're going to use his account now to broadcast a bonus Sack to the Future game. A game you wouldn't normally see. We're going to sim watch. Kind of like when two of our teams play each other. A game involving the 1961 San Francisco 49ers and 1961 Green Bay Packers. This is not necessarily meant to become a regular thing. It is, however, meant to be a bonus, like I said. The eventual original world champion 1961 Green Bay Packers, led by John Brody, is it's his team now in San Fran. There he is. And there's Barstar. My son's account is used primarily for roster editing, as he jumps from team to team to team. You may have seen on the games that we were showing earlier in the week, he was actually on the Bengals. In the past, he's been with the Buccaneers and the Vikings. Just a place we could store his account while we're playing. And I got the bright idea earlier to use it to do this. <coughs> the guy is voted. And a crushing 2-1 to one defeat. The Packers, there were four CPU versus CPU teams. How it worked is I asked the three other, um, hold on, L3, speed, slow, no, 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 shoot. Okay. Um, to pick one of the games, and had it been three votes for, I would have broken the tie, but there was actually... Two for one, and there's Bart Starr, 480 yards passing so far in the season, four TDs, one interception. Okay, we want to jump forward to the end of the game. There we go. Off. Looks like Jim Taylor. A look at the Packers offensive line. Jim Ringo, Jerry Kramer, Puzzy Thurston, Jim Taylor the fullback, Paul Horning the tailback. You got Boyd Dollar and Max McGee as your wide receivers. On a second and seven. We're not going to guarantee we'll do this every week. This is just some kind of extra when we're... Ooh, nice run by Taylor. No, that's Horning, actually. No, that is Taylor. I <coughs> misread the number. He had 68 yards last week. Of course, in week one, you might have seen them play the Dallas Cowboys twice. As the first game didn't seem to count. <coughs> Excuse me. Stars pass to Dowler is incomplete. The 49er defensive line, Leo Namalini and Monte Clark in the middle, Daniel Pochico and Charlie Kruger on the ends. Rob Harrison, Matt Hazeltine, and Gordon Kelly are your linebackers. You got Jerry Mertens, Abe Woodson as the corners, Eddie Dove, and I missed the other guy as the safety. <coughs> Baker. 25 Dave Baker. Star hands it off to Taylor. And Taylor's going to get probably six yards, eight yards, eight yards. Third and two. Star hands it off to Paul Horning. Horning with a spin move. 
He's got one man to beat, and he is going to score. Touchdown, Green Bay Packers. The Golden Boy goes 48 yards for the touchdown. <laughs> With a spin move. And he was basically gone. Spin move around Baker and Hazel Tyne. And then he just beats Mertens. And Horning's extra point is good. And the Packers lead 7-0. The good thing about this game winning is it was a Monday night game, so it wasn't the score wasn't showing. Here's John Brody. He has four touchdowns and one interception on the season, 371 yards. The score wasn't showing on the clips of the other games. And by this being a super sim, we won't see it. The scores of the other games in this one, so kind of sits out by itself. Brody back to pass. He finds a receiver, number 81. I'm not familiar with it. I believe that might have been Tommy Hackler. Uh, yeah, no, Ray Purden. Ray Purden, uh, a draftee who didn't make the team originally. <coughs> the 49ers are loaded with them. They have a lot of uh, original draftees that didn't make the team because the uh, computer went and signed a bunch of uh, players so I had to edit them real quick for the game. Packers are none. They signed nobody. Ray Norton. He took the first down. The 49er backfield of the previous season is now spread out in the NFL. Y.A. Tittles with the Giants. John Brody replaces him. Both Lenny Lyles and um, uh, both running backs are in Baltimore. Well, two of the three running backs. That's a completion to Ray Norton. And Hugh McElhenney is in Minnesota. John Thomas, Bob Sinclair, Ted Connolly, Bruce Hoses, Mosley, Ray Norton, and Rex Johnson, Billy Wilson, the tight end, R.C. Owens, one of the wide receivers. Her battery on it last time. I was going to carry it. Emlyn Tunnell on the former Giant on the tackle. Back of defensive line anchored by Henry Jordan in the middle with Willie Davis on the end. And Bill Quinlan. Ray Nitschke and Tom Bettis in the middle. Bill Forrester and Dan Curry, your outside backers. Willie Wood and her battery corners. Emlyn Tunnell and Jesse Whittington in your safeties. Throw his man. Willie Wood, no. Willie Wood is. Yeah, Willie Wood on the corner, on the coach. Lombardi getting Nitschke fired up for this fourth down. Hunter's got long hair. Nah, it'll have to be taken care of because nobody had long hair in the NFL in the 60s. Whoever number four was for the Green Bay Packers is wearing modern clothes. Star throws over the middle. It was caught. So Max McGee for four yards. You know what I'm kind of curious about is 
My son broadcast a Minecraft game earlier, and uh, um, comment is still there. Just, can I join? Hmm, weird. Okay, second down on six. Incomplete. Star having a rough outing. Star comes up the line of scrimmage, or in the shotgun, I mean. Throws, it's caught. For the first down. Number 80. Complete to Ron Kramer, the tight end. Uh, we we'll second and five from the Packer 44. Star back to pass. Throws it's caught. Oh, what a shot! Caught by it looks like Boyd Dowler. Boyd Dollar. Number 44, Eddie Dove with the tackle. Oh, that was Ron Kramer, I guess. Ron Kramer on the catch, Eddie Dove on the tackle. Yes, uh, if you're just joining us, Phantom Fighter, Paul Horning had a 48-yard touchdown run on his first carry of the game. Star rolls out. He's going to throw over the middle. It's caught. And the Packer offense is starting to take over. Boyd Dowler on the reception. In the double coverage. Jimmy Ridlin on the tackle. 49ers had uh, quite a few um, uh, what should we call them? Guys who were drafted that didn't make the original team. Quite a few signees. Free agent signees that I had to edit. Packers have a couple. And there's the pass down to Ron Kramer. It'll be first and goal for the pack. This Bart Starr now has 78 yards passing. This Packer offense just too much for the 49ers. Monday night football. The pack is rolling. See the Ravens are up on the Steelers in real football. A couple editing notes. Oh, we're going to have a, looks like offsides. Um, 49ers punter has really long hair. we got to fix that. And the Packers have a guy number, um, that was Gordon Kelly went offside. Number four, it looks like he's got modern equipment. Well, I'm sure it is as you, uh, Phantom Fighter, of course, controls the Bears. We'll need a 49er victory. Jim Taylor bursts into the end zone for the touchdown. Extra point is good. It's fourteen nothing Greenwood. Oh, 
That was 43. No, 48 Woodson on the return. They are. Well, they made it all the way to the NFC title game last year. They are who we think they are. They are who they're supposed to be for this time period, that's for sure. Hall of Famers all over the place, and they play like it. Brody fakes the handoff. Throws over the middle. It is caught. Spin move. And that is Clyde Connor on the reception. 28 yards. And Montanel makes the tackle. Packers already hold a victory over human team this year. As they beat also John M in the playoffs last year. First down at the 48. He takes the handoff. Gets the block. He's going to throw it out to to Ray Norton, who catches it and goes out of bounds. Second minute. So it is intercepted by Ray Nitschke. And Nitschke's got some room. Brody's going to push him out of bounds. And that will end the first quarter with the Green Bay Packers leading the San Francisco 49ers 14 to nothing, and the 49ers are back in business. I gotta give John Brody credit for making that tackle on Ray Nitschke. That has to be a scary sight. Throws it over the middle, it is incomplete, intended for Ron Kramer. Looks like Abe Woodson on the coverage. Packers come back to the lane. Here's the gift to Jim Taylor on the Packer sweep. He will get seven yards. More of an off tackle. Back to pass, third and four. Throws road. Oh, it's just dropped by Boyd Deller. He's wide open, and that'll bring on Paul Horning to attempt what looks to be a 45 yard field goal attempt. 44. Good 17 nothing Packers. The so Golden Boy has 12 of the 17 points. No, that's not right. This is got a touchdown with six, field goal nine, two extra points. 11. 11 of the 17 points. And then he kicks off. Taken in the end zone. Oh, what a shot! What a tackle there by Dale Hackbart. As he brings down... Yeah, 28. Not sure who that was. It was a... Drafted unsignees. We gotta get a little shot of their last name for me to tell you they are. I do have the, the pages open, but... Right, here we go. Brody under center. He's back to pass. Overthrows his man. John Wittenden on the coverage. 
They are trying to intimidate the Niners. I think they're doing a good job. You know, I should have started a... Too late now, but... Remember next time, start a... When you... Excuse me, when you do one of these things, uh... Now it's what I'm looking for. A party. So we all can discuss it while we're watching. Brody over the middle. It was going to be caught. First down. To Wilson. That might be one of those uh, free agent pickups that um, was in the league last year that I didn't notice. Brody back to pass. Throws it over the middle. It's caught. No drop. Got my Purden. Brody's going to run. He's going to pick up the first down and then some to the 30. Before he's finally going to be brought down. Picks up 29 yards and Emlyn Tunnell makes the tackle. First and ten at the twenty-six. Back to showing a safety blitz. Here he comes. He's picked up. Brody throws the pass complete. To Monty Stickles. Second down and eight from the 25. No, oh, and we got a false start on the 49ers. We caught on either tackle, but it looks like. False start offense. We're not going to see which one it was actually called on. Second and 13 from the 30. One up to 29. Brody throws it's caught. That's Purden on the reception. Here the Chargers get the 3 0, beating the Texans. Brody in the shotgun, third and seven. Throws it's caught for the first down. First and ten from the fifteen. I do not believe we've seen the 49ers yet this season. It's evident by the amount of non-roster members they have on the field for this game. And what I say by that is, um, in case you're watching this after the fact, 
we rate the players based on their actual season. It's actually Fancy Fighter rates the players. And uh, he rates them the week we play them. So he'll look over his um, formula and the rating and uh, how they actually played and give them a rating. <laughs> well, we haven't seen the 49ers yet, so that's why you're seeing more of their roster members, their fill roster filler on the field than you will if you see them against us. But like I said, this is kind of a bonus game. It's just something for fun. Don't know who's going to win. I do have the rosters out. I'm doing the best I can to say who's who. Well, we got another false start in the 49ers. That'll back them up. It'll be third and 19. False start offense. Shit on Steelers. Was it Le'Veon Bell? Oh, no, it wasn't. James Conner. I like that. Cancer provider. Brody rolls out. He's getting chased from behind and is brought down and sacked by big number 61, Nelson Torberin. The rookie out of Wichita State. Comes up big. Here, Torberin beats the man. Let's see who he beat. Number 79. Bob St. Clair, the old pro. Rookie getting by the old pro. Yeah, exactly. Uh, if you can see the live chat, Phantom Fighter says if we get bonus games later in the year, it should be more accurate. Um... And it hits the crossbar, and there's no good, and the score remains 17 nothing. No, I have two theories on Tarkenton, though. If you saw the Phantom Fighters game with the Bears yesterday, George Shaw played in at quarterback, not rookie fan Tarkenton. Which kind of, in one way, makes it, you know, um, the rookie's not starting, he's sitting learning. Later in the season, when the Bears play him again, or the Bills play him, he should be playing. One of the reasons, I think, is... Um, because how we do the ratings, the players aren't rated until we can play them. Well, the computers already put their game plan in based around George Shaw, so that's why he played. The other thing I can do is I can turn on um, automatic starters, which means the highest rated player starts on the team no matter what. The reason it's not on is because, you know, um, what if Brian Phelps wants to start? Glenn Dawson instead of Milt Plum. I don't know who's rated higher or vice versa. That pass is incomplete. But I, I do believe Tarkenton, if you look from week four at the roster, he'll be the starter for the I just think it was just a, a matter of he was rated after games had already started and played. <coughs> I don't believe you will ever see that again if Tarkenton doesn't start until 1977, maybe Tigers. Unless when he's with the Giants, John M. doesn't show him. That pass is complete. The boy Deller. And the fans here at uh, Kizar Stadium are bowing as the pack continues to roll. Real quick, let me take a look at the actual... 1961 49ers versus Packers. Yeah, yeah. See, so Plum does have a higher rating. He should be starting your next meeting. If he's not, we'll turn on the automatic starter thing, and um, guys like Brian will just have to make sure they know going into the game. They check their. I don't believe it'll affect the user control teams. I, I don't know. It's something we're going to have to learn and find out. Okay, the Packers played the 49ers on September 24, 1961, and they defeated the 49ers in Lambeau Field 30-10. to 
On December 10th, they went out to Keysar Stadium. And, uh, oh, yes, Eddie LeBaron and Don Meredith, that's another good one. The Keysar Stadium in San Francisco, the 49ers actually won 22-21 on their pack. So they split the season series. Star throws. The pass is complete. To Ron Kramer for nine yards. There you heard it here, for folks. The Cowboys will be taking on the Washington Redskins, as we will see on the Brian Feltz channel. Played the best for last, the defending world champion Cowboys. And then Jim Brown and the Browns. And then it's some of later time. That pass is incomplete, bringing on a fourth down, and the Golden Boy will come on to attempt. 24 yard field goal. See, the Steelers have tied the Ravens at 14. I don't know, the Packers are going for it. Oh, it's third and one. I almost took the I, I, my bad. Start back to pass. Throws over the middle. Too high. Yeah. G Men got a win over the Philadelphia Eagles. 24 19. You see the score on the bottom there. Cowboys were 1 and 1 on the season. Gotta try and maintain pace, bro. And this time it's a 24 yard field goal attempt by the Golden Boy. The Notre Damer. The Heisman Trophy winner, Paul Hornan. Speaking of Notre Dame. How about them fighting Irish? Big, big victory over Stanford yesterday. Which gets to 4-0. Virginia Tech is next. Lost to Packers, beat Sunday first. Okay. My other favorite college team, Georgia, continue rolling. Destroying Tennessee. Good weekend in college football. Bad weekend in the NFL for me. Because not only did both the Bills and Falcons lose, but my son has decided his two favorite teams are the Packers and the Bengals. And the Bills and Falcons lost to them. So my nine-year-old son got a double dose of victory over me today. My daughter, on the other hand, likes the purple teams. The Vikings and Ravens. And of course, the football gods continue to hate on me. That's my wife, Giants fan, four Super Bowls in her lifetime. Already, my kids, just by choosing their teams, my son is nine, Packers won a Super Bowl seven years ago. My daughter's will be six in about two hours. Her team won the Super Bowl when she was two months, three months old. No, no. He likes the Bengals because they look like Tigger. And um, we've been watching NFL films from the 60s, so I think that's why he likes the Packers. We'll see if we get in the 70s. Maybe he switches to the Steelers. I don't know. But he's nine, so this should be a point where things are starting to gel. Yes, the only team. Of course, the Patriots right now are on two in a row. Hopefully they don't make it to three. <coughs> I don't, Brian, I honestly. Oh, oh, somebody's injured. Is that John Brody? And I think John Brody just got hurt. Um, I don't think you'll see them, any of my kids like in the Cowboys for the simple fact that uncle, their uncle does. Their uncle loves the Cowboys, and, and they know how I tease him. And their grandfather loves the Cowboys. And I think that uh, that, that ship sailed a long time ago because I like to be antagonist to them. So in at quarterback, hold on, let me uh, bring up the roster here. Number 11... Bob Waters, in his second year out of Presbyterian, a 87th round draft pick in the 1960 draft by the 49ers. Bob Waters. Timeout is called. The 49ers are getting destroyed all over the place. <coughs> oh. 
It's nice to see the chat working again. Hopefully whatever was wrong with YouTube the last couple of weeks is uh, fixed and we'll be able to talk to each other because um, I'm going to be in my office watching Brian play the Cowboys games. Waters rolls out. He takes off and he's going to slide after 10 yards and a first down. So the rookie's got some uh, intelligence and half his helmet's been eaten. I don't know why that glitch is there. Red Hickey, the inventor of the shotgun. Waters back to pass. Oh, huh. Ray Nitschke kind of just said, sit down. He just looked like he pushed him with one hand. Sit down, kid. Now, the 49ers must have injuries in the backfield because uh, J.D. Smith hasn't been playing either. Going for a 45-yard field goal attempt for Tommy Davis. Kick is up, and it's good. And Tommy Davis hits from 45 and puts the 49ers on the board. 20 to 3. Lombardi checking over the play sheet. Davis to kick off. Uh-oh, Willie Wood is gone. He's got one man chasing him, number 38. Wood's losing some steam. And number 38. One of the non-roster members catches him and tackles him. And we get to halftime with the Packers leading the 49ers 20-3. Packers are uh, not necessarily dominating in yardage, but they're dominating the score. There's Horning's big 48-yard touchdown run. The end of it. Jim Taylor right up the middle. Look at that hole. Brody throws it to uh, Connor for the first down. One of the few highlights the Niners have had so far. Ray Nitschke intercepts the pass. Tommy Davis with a long 45 yard field goal. And it looks like Brody's gonna come back in the ball game. The one thing about Super Sim is we don't see what the necessary, um, uh, blah, blah, blah. The injury is how long it'll be out, so you kind of. The Nitschke gets his third sack in the season. Abe Woodson, the All Pro, on the tackle, and Brody is coming back on the field. Signals. Hand off to Ray Norton. Norton's got 16 yards tonight on the game. On the, on the ground. Norton in his second year out of San Jose State. Good deal.
Henry Jordan bringing down Norton. Well, hopefully you get better quality then. I'll get to schedule it tomorrow. Brody back to pass on third and three. Over the middle, it is intercepted. And he is going to go. It's going to be a pick six for number 46. Hank Greminger. Looks like it was thrown right to him. And the Packers go up 26 to 3. Well, sometimes you get what you get. I mean, you vote. We voted for the um, Packers 49ers game, knowing that uh, how good the Packers are. 49ers had a good team, though, but. Let's just spend the. Uh, Hopefully we'll get a better game the next time we do this. Paul Horning connects to the extra point. It's 27-3 Green Bay. You did vote for the Rams Raiders. Brian was the Rams Raiders vote. By the looks of the score, it was a 21-20 game. Um, Phantom Fighter and John M. voted for this game. So this game won. Had there been a three-way tie, let's say Phantom voted for the Chargers and Texans. I would have broke the tie, and to be honest with you, I probably would have gone to this game, so. That's true. <laughs> John Brody comes back out, now he's throwing two interceptions. One to Ray Nitschke and one to Hank Greminger. One name you know, one name you don't. Here is the give to number 28, a non-roster member, probably, I don't know, not even going to guess, because there's two different kinds of non-roster members. There's ones they've signed that were in the league in 60, that's Johnson, that's got to be one of those. I'm looking at the draft picks. Yeah, I don't see a. I don't see a Johnson. So he's probably was in the league and just didn't get. Um, not in real life, didn't make a roster in '61. So he's a free agent in a, in a Madden game, and they pick him up. We can't control all that, unfortunately. And they also the other thing is that uh, 1961 NFL teams carried 40 players. I think AFL teams carried 40 as well. And 2018, or 17, 53. So there's roster filler. Brody's pass is complete to number 88, Clyde Connor. For basically nothing. Clyde Connor in his second year out of Pacific. And the 49ers will punt. And then we get another look at the puncher, the hippie puncher of the long hair. I'm going to fix that right after this game is over. And Herb Adderley on the return gets a couple yards. First and ten for the pack. Three on the 30-yard line. 448 going to third. Leading 27 to three. Star back to pass. And the pass is complete for the first down. Two number 80. Huh, roster filler. That's the first time I've seen that for the Packers. Uh. It's the 60s. 
Yeah, it's 61 though, and the NFL has strict uh, rules. They had New York Yankee rules. New York Yankees. The Red Sox. World Series predictions? Red Sox and Braves. More likely, probably Houston and Chicago, but I want the Red Sox and Braves. Boston's had a rough couple weeks. But they haven't really had to play, though, so it's hard to tell. Taylor, off tackle. Breaks the tackle. First down. I think it's exciting in the National League, though. There are going to be two game number 163s, the tiebreaker games, something the NFL didn't have. The Dodgers and Rockies and the Cubs and Brewers were the winners. The winners get to some time off and will host a, the divisional series. And the losers have to immediately turn around and play on Tuesday because the National League plays first, each other. So let's just hypothetically say Colorado and Milwaukee lose. Colorado's going to got to travel to Milwaukee. Get right on the plane, travel to Milwaukee, and play a one-and-done a one done Walker game. So it's going to be a rough couple of days for the National League teams. Braves, though. The Braves get to sit back and watch. Starting the shotgun, first and five. Taylor off tackle. The, the holes, the Packer line opens. I mean, these are the kind of holes that we all wish we had, but we don't have the Packers line. Baltimore's line is not bad, but it ain't Green Bay's. Well, the Astros are in the American League, so they would have to beat one of the American League East teams, but uh, go Boston. The only Boston team I like, by the way. And the only reason I like them is because I hate the Yankees. My hatred of the Yankees started my love for the Red Sox. Paul Horning, his first carry went 48 yards for touchdown. His second buries him in the middle of the line. Star throws. Astros versus Brewers. That would be an interesting one considering that the Astros are once NL, the Brewers are once American League, and they switched. So now they'd be representing the other leagues that they originally started in. Ah, you, yeah, you're thinking the same thing I am. That would be an interesting World Series. The, the, it'd be nice to see the Cubs go if the Braves can't. And the reason I'm going to say this is because the Cubs were my dad's. He only liked two sports teams, the Chicago Cubs and the Ottawa Red Blacks in the CFL. And um, my dad passed away in April, so it would be nice to see the Cubs go play against my Red Sox. But again, you know, even though I love my dad, it's a fake. It's a fake, and he is going to be tackled on the one, but it's a, it'll be a first and ten for the 49ers. As Gary Neifelk could not knife his way into the end zone. As Horning throws the pass to Neifelk. And the 49ers take over. They hold the Packers on a fake field goal. And is that a safety? Nope. They're going to save forward progress out to the one. For number 32, C.R. Roberts. Well, hello, Mr. Hatcher, and welcome aboard. You're watching a bonus game for the 1961 Sack to the Future. Now, Championship Brewers versus Braves, New Milwaukee versus Old Milwaukee. And then, if the Braves get to the World Series against the Red Sox, it'd be New Boston versus Old Boston. Or actually, Old Boston versus even Older Boston. The Braves, before they were in Milwaukee, were in Boston. <coughs> little history lesson, baseball-wise. And Brody's going to go down in a heat. Willie Davis 
And big number 71, Bill Forrester on the sack. It'll be a fourth and nine now for the 49ers. So they stop the pack on a fake field goal. But they're unable to get a first down and will have to punt. As Tommy Davis, the hippie punter for the 49ers, will come on. The last two World Series champions, you mean? Cubs and Astros? And Davis puts the hair into it and gets the punt away. For battery on the turn. Something tells me Davis is going to be getting a haircut in about eight minutes of football time. Here comes Bart Starr. Paul Horning has two his 49. But that second run will really kill his average. The first one went 38 yards for touchdown. The second one went pretty good. Star taking a minute four left in the third. You know, for a sim game, this has been long. Just I'm forgetting to hit the X button to advance things, though. Been enjoying the conversation. Jim Taylor picks up about three. He's got 59 on the day, 37. Yeah, I'm sure there'll be a lot of uh, sick time burned in the Wisconsin, Illinois areas. At least it's a short trip, and then the winner or the loser gets to. Um, <clears throat> stay home as the loser of the National League game or the National League West game will have to travel all the way out to either Chicago or Milwaukee for Tuesday's wild card. The funny thing about these play-in games though, back before the wild cards, play-in games was one and done. Now these uh, tiebreaker, I guess not play-in games, these tiebreaker games aren't the one and done, they're or proceeding only. So they could actually end up playing each other again in an actual series if they both then go on to win. You know, because aren't the, the Cubs Brewers winner going to have the top seed? So the Cubs Brewers winner then goes on to beat the um, is it the, is wrong is it? Yeah. Goes on to uh, Cubs Brewer and uh, would go on to host the wildcard team. So if the um, loser, the Cubs Brewer loser, then wins the wildcard, they're back in the series again, I think. Yeah, I was just confusing myself. Hey, look, Jets and Jaguars played just like they did really today. <clears throat> okay. It, I, you know what? Let's let's say the Cubs win. It's just Cubs win, Brewers lose. Let's say the Rockies lose to the Dodgers. The Dodgers play the Braves. The Rockies then have to come to Milwaukee for a one game. Let's say the Brewers, you know, they're at home. They beat the Rockies. They send Brewers at Cubs in a five game series. So they have one game series and then possibly a five game series. If I'm understanding this correctly. Looks like a delay of game. Not that the Packers really need all the time. Taylor up the middle. He's going to get six. I know. I, I wish we could, uh, even if you do, like, these are the coaches, the real coaches, but the uh, 2017 coaches. So they're going to look nothing like Red Hickey and Vince Lombardi. But um, even when you can create coaches, it there's nothing you can do to make them look like the 60s guys. No fedoras, no Tom Landry hats. Uh, nobody can wear a 
press pass like John Madden. No suits at all. There's the handoff to Horning. Horning spins. Actually slowed down. Gets inside the 10 for first and goal. I don't even think you can create the tie. They give you like three looks and they're all pretty much casual looks. Modern day. Taylor on the, the off tap with the left and he gets to the two, seven and a Second goal from the two, one and a half yard line. And then Bill Belichick's not even on this game. But yeah, you can get his look. There's a sloppy hoodie look. Nice tackle there by number 83, Gordon Kelly. Third and goal from the five. Star back to pass. Throws it over the middle, incomplete out of the end zone. It'll be fourth down. And Paul Horning will come on to attempt another field goal. This time from 21 yards. Oh well, boys, I don't know if this was a success or not with a score of 30 to 3, but at one point I did have four people watching this game. So I have to say that um, we got some views. Given the star attraction of the 61 Packers, though, I think that helps. Can the 49ers get a touchdown? To Ray Norton. Second and inches, and Norton picks up nine and three quarters of a yard. For Ray Nitschke brings him down. Nope, it's a draw. Ray Norton's going to get the first down. He's got 36 on the day. And stay tuned for Sack to the Future on the Brian Phelps channel as it's the big rivalry, the Cowboys and Redskins. And at some point, we also have the Browns and the semi pro Buccaneers. Brody steps up, he throws, incomplete. John Brody is 12 of 20, 103 yards and two interceptions. One returned all the way for six. He threw off balance across his body. Not a typical John Brody move. From what I've seen. Not that I ever saw him play live. But. Who knows? Draw play to Norton. Rains right into the smack dab into two Packers, according, including Henry Jordan. The Packers are just bigger than the rest of the league. They're bigger, they're stronger, they're faster. Brody has to jump to get the snap. And hand off those two. Johnston, Foster Filler. And 
on comes Sorry. Hippie Tommy Davis for the punt. It's going to go way out of... No, it is going to bounce and be out at the five. My sources tell me that uh, punter Tommy Davis has a haircut appointment set for about 10.30 tonight. Packers take over on the five-yard line. 2.47 to go. If you've made it this far, thanks for watching. You must either be a member of the league or a Packer fan. Right up the middle goes Jim Taylor, and he is smashed. It says they gave credit to Tommy Bettis on the tackle, but he's a Packer. Look at the stats on the bottom. They just aren't catching up. Taylor breaks it out wide. Does not have the speed as Abe Woodson catches him from behind. But he goes 40 or 39 yards off tackle. And the Packers have 177 yards rushing. Here at Kizar Stadium on the San Francisco Bay. Doesn't it look like Kizar Stadium? Seagulls everywhere. Horrible field. No? Maybe? Give to uh, Jim Taylor again. He's got 124 yards rushing. Remodeled Kizar. Yeah, I guess so. Taylor up the middle. The workhorse here in the fourth, a minute to go. 38 seconds now. This should be probably the final play. Star gives it to Taylor one last time off tackle. He's going to be tackling in the back field that time. And that should just about do it. I don't see why they have any reason to run another snap. They're lining up. Three, two, one. And the Green Bay Packers win on Monday Night Football here in the Psych of the Future bonus game. Head over to the Brian Feltz channel now for Cowboys and Redskins. As always, thanks for joining us in Psych of the Future. I'm Vinny Vincent. Make sure you subscribe, click like. Also find the Brian Feltz, John M., and Phantom Fighter channels. with the Green Bay Packers to beat the 49ers 30-3 in this bonus Back to the Future game. Until next time, I'm Vinny Vincent, and you're not.